Essentially, the most vital part of the state formation process has not happened yet in South Sudan. The sitting down in South Sudanese, negotiating and agreeing amongst each other about how to share power, about what their country will look like, that still hasn't happened. Uh, but we do think basically until that does happen, you're likely, unfortunately, to see perpetual conflict in the country. South Sudan, you know, it was born 10 years ago and there was a lot of hope around the country, um, especially among South Sudanese, but also I think within Africa and the broader international community. It's very obvious now a decade later after this very brutal civil war that started in 2013 that really the country is failing. Um, the problem is, is that there hasn't been a lot of consensus about why the country is failing or really what can be done about it. Um, and, and the reason for that is just South Sudan's problems are just so vast. South Sudan is a place of terrible, terrible um, underdevelopment. And it's a country that is heavily divided among many different groups. The ruling party in South Sudan, it, its ruling elites, really promised its people a decentralized form of government. They called it taking towns to the people. That was, that was the mantra. Um, after independence, and really before independence, what happened instead is power became incredibly centralized, incredibly monopolized. The politics immediately became about who would be the president, and, and essentially the president is the person who has the ultimate power. And instead of negotiating amongst each other about how South Sudanese could share power amongst its diverse groups, um, it became just a power struggle for the top, a very much all winner-take-all struggle. That looks terribly, terribly ill-suited to, to South Sudan and the challenges it faces. Because the reality is that South Sudan is a place where there are not roads connecting uh, the capital or the rest of the country to each other. It doesn't have really basic institutions. Um, and everyone has guns. Um, and so, you know, it's a place that really requires consensus in order to govern. Uh, that's how fragile the state is. Um, and that's basically the opposite of the political system that they've adapted. And our point is we think that contrast and that dissonance will basically continue to likely cause perpetual power struggle and conflict until it's changed. Mm -hmm.